Pat Tierney's journey to the bog is comparable to a Mexican trying to cross the Rio Grande. His turf is on Inish line and he must plan its homecoming to coincide with the spring tide when his horse can cross at low water. As in all islands, tide, wind and weather decide many things. Moderate westerly winds at present, backing southerly and increasing strong to gale force ahead of the rain belt. Winds will veer southwest to west by evening, remaining strong or gale force with violent gusts on exposed coasts tonight. Now the forecast for ship. And in the aftermath of the storm, stooks must be remade and the damage put right. The feeling of being hemmed in by sea and wind is one of the reasons young people leave Inishbotham. Lack of employment is of course the major reason. But do young people dislike island life? I love living on the island here. Well, if there was something to keep me here all the time, I'd love to stay here. But in summertime, it's lots to do, in winter not so much. I want to stay here if I can. Something to keep me here. In the summertime there is again in the winter, there's not so much to do. Young people go away. They've nothing to do here, so they have to go. The island needs a lot more young people than what we have. I mean, more people to come back and stay. But they can't unless it's employment work. Some Inish Boffin people feel secure about the future. Others look to nearby Inish Shark, now depopulated, and say this could happen to Boffin too. Of course, Shark was different. Only 23 people were living there in 1960 when they were taken to the mainland. The main difficulties on Inish Shark, aside from its low population, were not having a telephone or a proper harbour sheltered from the sea. Is Boffin too suffering from lack of aid? We're not a Gaelic island, and um, therefore we don't get the benefits of the Gaelic island yet, or indeed any of the Gaelic areas. In other respects, there's a, a reluctance to improve themselves because they're afraid of um, being either cut or losing their social welfare benefits. Now, I don't know how much of this is based on actual fact or not, but I know that there's a genuine fear of this happening, and uh, it does. Um, deter people from, from making progress. Farming is making very little headway on the island. Naturally, when all inputs have to come from Cleggan in a small boat, one can understand why progress is slow. The fear of losing unemployment assistance is a real one and is a hindrance to good farm husbandry too. However, the Department of Social Welfare say that farm income is calculated for people with less than £15 valuation by multiplying it by 20, and that this alone decides what unemployment assistance a small farmer is entitled to. So by improving his farm, a farmer doesn't lose out on unemployment assistance. Another difficulty on the island is that of getting adequate fuel supplies in the form of turf. Trees are non-existent and turf banks are few. Accordingly, a practice has developed, going back many years, of cutting shallow peat off the rocks and drying it for fuel. This is done in many parts of the island, and scraw turf is burned in most houses. This activity is reducing the rough grazing for sheep year by year, and in fact the landlord in the last century took such a serious view of it that he banned it completely. However, it's easy for a conservationist to decry the cutting of scraw turf. It's quite another matter to come up with alternative suggestions for fuel supplies on a treeless island. Pat Lavelle, the island's oldest inhabitant at 86, has seen many developments on Inish Boffin, stretching back to the years of the First World War and beyond. In Pat's view, the island had a population of close on 2,000 people, 
and up to 50 boats employ 250 men in the fishing industry. Continuous emigration, coupled with the Cleggan disaster of 1927 and the decline of the fishing industry, has resulted in a population today of 247, and only a handful engaged in fishing. In Pat's early days, the island had many trades and skills that helped the islanders be self-sufficient for most of their requirements. There was a waver, there was a tailor, there was a blacksmith, there was a, a shoemaker, and all these were professional men. I tell you, you're, 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 the shoe that they couldn't make. And why, why have they all disappeared? I don't know, the world doesn't want to ever know. There isn't one, there isn't a tailor or a shoemaker or a waver or anything in the same one. And were most people involved in fishing at the time? Oh, well, mostly, most, oh, no, most part of them were, yes, most part of them. Were you fishing? Oh, I mightn't. So what type of fish? A mackerel and then mostly, but I was uh, catching huddles as well, then rain, pollock, all kinds of fish, fling, long lines, fillets. And why has all that stopped over the past 30, I don't 40 know. years? I don't know, no one. I don't know. But of course the market, I think, is the most kind of uh, especially for mackerel, it is for mackerel. I know there's no market at all over mackerel. If you brought a few hundreds of mackerel, you take it tomorrow, even if you don't want to look at you or take them at all. Well, it, aren't they all fishing for lobster now, or quite a few? They are, they are, they are. But not one everybody. Issue. Oh, not everybody is one issue. Ah, sure. If everybody was at them, it would be no good because they're a very scarce kind of fish, you know. Very scarce. All the young people there, they're gone over. You yourself nearly went away, I believe, when you were young. Well, I was a farmer, I had my name then for, for, for the state. You, know. you didn't go? <laughs> I didn't go. It, it happened, the uh, immigration was stopped at the time, in the middle of the first world war. Were you ever sorry you didn't go? Ah, uh, but uh, I was and I wasn't. At the time I was, at the time I wasn't. Anyhow, I didn't. I didn't go. What do you think will be the future of an island like this, with the young people immigrating and that? Ah, I suppose, and hold on for another while anyway. Do you think the farming has gone backwards? Do you think like that we used to use the land better in the olden days? Oh, a long way, a long way. What, you grew more potatoes and things? Oh, certainly. Every, every house would have a boat, um, they'd have a boat an acre of potatoes, so and an acre of corn, mostly barley. Barley? Yeah, mostly barley. Did it grow well? Oh yes, oh yes. How did you never plough the land at all with horses? No, no, I didn't want to, I didn't. Always the spade? Always the spade. <laughs>